what is going on guys and welcome back to another day um yeah not bad but not great looks like rain um yeah so let's do some car stuff first of all though just want to say this is um this man's happy place may not be to others but it is to me so yeah today we are going to be working on the red project um ideally i want to get it out um, and get an exhaust on it at the moment so i can move it about a bit more freely without disturbing obviously the people that live around here um, i don't want to be a nuisance to it so first things first obviously tools out wheels out to swap over car jacked up let's get this wheel off so i have tuner bolts um holding my wheels on so we need one of those 17 mil bit on the impact and let's go for it. One. There's only four of this. Two. That one's on a bit tighter. Three. And I think I need a new battery as well. And we have four. That well off. Wheel on. Oh. So this is the last one of these bolts around somewhere. Wheel on. Bolt. Line her up. There's the first bolt. And then obviously go in a star pattern. So one, two, three, four, five. We don't have the fifth bolt, but you know. You know how it goes. Well, and obviously like I said one's going to be missing so not much we can do about that right now apart from bolt it up before that's plenty still don't drive on it though but to move the car is fine one there we go got it one two three four check them that on and then obviously do the next one we get the car out now you guys may not think there's much of a difference between the two wheels that was on the car and what I'm putting on but these are ET43 and these are ET42 now that's only one but it's enough to catch the front brake caliper so yeah mark 4 BBS splits like the anniversary mark 3 star ones will catch along here um, also yeah we do have drilled and slotted rotors on this so that's a nice little bonus um, going to be doing a few other bits with the car today as well I've got to try a VR6 ECU to see if it's demobilized from my friend Dan um, from the previous video so we'll check that in a minute and see if that works um, fingers crossed that it does um, if not then it was worth a try so for anyone that doesn't know as well, this was a um, supercharged VR6. Obviously it looks a bit messy at the moment, but you know, I'm not too worried about that for a second. We're sort of working on it, working around the car, doing loads of various other bits um, as and when I can. Um, but yeah, this was supercharged. So the supercharger currently isn't on. So that's the oil feed for the supercharger. So I looped that back into the head um, to keep the engine in, uh, oil in the engine, obviously. Um, math sensor and everything's plugged in as usual so yeah time to now move the car now I've got um, ramps for the front so I'm going to put it up on the ramps possibly axle stands after and um, we'll see how much room I've got to work underneath and then on the rear end of the car we'll jack it up um, put some axle stands underneath that to give me the working space that I need to do what I need to do so I'm gonna have to be fairly quick because obviously with that car it's um, only got the down pipe it's gonna be loud so I'll be very quick to get that off and onto these ramps.
are on. Yeah. So, there she is. It's been a while. It's been a while since that car has been out of that space. So yeah, as I was saying earlier about the rear calipers, obviously they're so they're seated so far back that there's just no chance that they're going to touch, which is great. So, but yeah, what an absolute state. A bit dusty, but uh, she'll get there. So what we have going on is a um, three-inch exhaust system with a downturn downpipe. Um, this come off of a uh, another car. Um, we're going to decay it just for a minute, um, purely because it's only going to be rolling around in here, it's not going to be on the road. So I'm just going to clean up the tape, jack the rear end of the car up and start getting this on. Right, so now we are uh, a bit more up in the air. Time to get this bad boy on. It's going to be so much nicer being able to move it around without having to worry about people thinking, like, listen to that noisy sod. Definitely got some issues going on under here though, but nothing we're not gonna fix. Right, so, the exhaust is all on. Just a quick sort of brushed bodge up because it's not gonna stay on. So let's see how she performs. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Some nice exhaust notes there. So that's good news. We've sorted a temporary exhaust out for a minute and now I can move the car around a bit more without worrying about upsetting people too much. Um, now, just gonna give you guys a quick show around the car and show you what sort of stuff needs to be done. So I know she's looking a bit sorry for herself at the moment, but so we know we've got a non-genuine wing either side. Uh, I put those on purely because the bottoms was rotten. Um, you will see why. So we've obviously got a rotten floor pan and a rotten seal. So eventually they will be coming off. Um, that is pretty much both sides as well. So this one isn't too bad. It's been patched up, but it's not been done the greatest. So that will be coming out. Some rusty parts for sure underneath the cart. Obviously everything looks a bit crusty. So we will eventually be going through that. Um, apart from that really, I mean the rest of the car is pretty decent. Paintwork obviously needs doing. Boot, um, that's temporary, that, that is not going to be staying, so that can go away, we'll put a new one on and have that painted. Tank straps need replacing um, underneath the car where it's had a bad spray job at some point, so you know, all of that will be coming off. Literally this car is going to be stripped apart and done the whole way through. Um, it's going to be a very OEM show car. Some funny little bits though. Nap-on, the new snap-on. Um, yeah, so you guys have had a quick look around the car. I'm just going to drop it back in its parking space and then we're going to have a look at this ECU for my friend Dan. I think I've mentioned before, all the strut towers are good. The rear arches, they're pretty good too. You know, we're, we're pretty solid behind there on all the important parts. So that's good news. Um, definitely will make a difference. And that's, like I said, both sides, front end rear as well so she's got potential but it's going to take some time so yeah I mean that's a quick walk around the car like I say it does look rough um, to be expected it's a project car um, definitely one worth saving though like I say it's a factory VR6 Vento sunroof option um, needs paint you know needs a lot of engine work needs a lot of work full stop to be honest with you um, I want to do it all myself and learn you know I'm very cautious um, I'll research everything as well but you know I'm on my own with this um, and if I'm completely honest I need your help guys um, so you know if you can like comment subscribe share the videos you know get it out there help me get out there um, help me to help you guys you know by you helping me I'll be able to bring you much better content 
Um, hopefully you know much quicker as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm one guy on my own. Um, I sometimes have my friend and work apprentice Lyndon helping me with bits. Um, you know, he's quite mechanically minded as well and loves working on cars, so we both enjoy it. You know, we both get along really well as well, which helps. So, yeah, like I said, I appreciate you guys obviously watching the video and I appreciate everyone that does like, comment and subscribe already. Um, yeah, it, you know, I'm really enjoying this journey, to be honest. I know I know, not much has happened with um, Project Red, but as I explained last time, um, wife got pregnant and we had our son, which, you know, is great news and well worth putting this project off for to make sure everything was going smoothly in that respect. But, yeah, let's get the car back in its... Um, parking position and then let's have a look at this ECU and as you guys can see we've got the AC model a Mokul um, intercooler just to help with the oil cooling because of the supercharger but yeah ECU time first things first disconnect your battery once you've done that onto the ECU so yeah ECUs are pretty easy um, you have a little catches underneath this usually has a bolt in it holding it um, I don't have that at the moment we have a little one there to tighten it all up. You don't need to remove that bracket to be honest. You can just slide the ECU out. Right, so, just grab your ECU at the front where the connections are, just pull out of that bracket. Um, I'm not too worried about my cabin filter at the moment, but if you guys are, I'd suggest removing this first, make it a little bit easier as well. And then slide your ECU forward, around, up, and out we go. There we go, one ECU. And then all you do is turn it upside down and that clip there pull towards you and it releases and then you can keep pulling it back um, at holding the ECU at the same time and then you will disconnect your ECU. So these ECUs only clip in one way and connect. See these little ones here on the sides, both sides there? Just make sure that the ECU is the right way for that to go in and be accepted, otherwise you'll bend the terminals. Once you bend the terminals, you might have a bit of a nightmare. So yeah, just make sure that's the right way around before you plug it back in. Right, the spare ECU's in. Just got to um, connect the battery back up and then we will give it a fire. Let's um, see if this ECU even works, actually. Oh. Right, so we have power. Keys in the ignition. Let's give her a turn and see what happens. So that sounds like that's got a demobilizer on it as well. Give it one more try. It's good that it works though. So the ECU works, which is a bonus. Yeah, so that's definitely got an immobilizer on it, which is a shame. Because that would be really handy if I could have um, sent that to my friend Dan and he could have um, used that on his one that he's just got running. Oh, battery's dying. Oops. So it seems like we had an issue with the battery. That battery is only tiny. It was for a Honda actually. Um, so yeah, let's try that again, because I don't know whether it was struggling to start because the ECU's got an immobiliser, or whether it was because of the battery. We are in neutral, like I say, I hate it all, we will be changing that. So it fires, which is good, but... We don't seem to have a running ECU. It works, but I think it's got an immobiliser. Right, yeah, that's definitely an immobiliser kicking in. That is a shame. Well, that's a shame. Um, what I'm going to do now is obviously let my friend Dan know that that ECU's got an immobiliser as well, um, which is a shame because I was hoping it didn't, and then I could have just sent it straight to him, um, and he would have been able to actually use his VR and drive around, um, which would have been great. What I'm going to do now though is I'm going to actually have a look inside those ECUs and see if there's anything different between the two of them in terms of the immobiliser. I doubt there will be because I think the immobiliser is programmed onto the actual ECU. It's not like a chip or anything like that in particular. Um, but yeah, let's open those up and see what's going on inside. Just don't forget guys, anytime you unplug your ECU, disconnect your battery as well. Golden rule, don't forget. I'm not sure whether it will do anything but it's just not worth running that sort of risk but yeah so let's have a look inside these two ECUs um, to look inside it's just four little hex bolts screws whatever you want to call them so we'll undo those and then compare 
So I've just checked the size and it's a T15 Torx bit that you need to undo those screws. Right, so I've already undone some, but let's have a um, look inside these, see what's going on. This is the um, spare one that I've got. Two bolts on this one, and then we're done. But yeah, like I say, very, very simple um, ECUs really, in comparison to some. Oh, must be talked a bit. Last one. Everything seems to be okay with the spare one at the moment. Ooh. That's a little bit different. Well, that's something a bit interesting. So, this is the spare ECU. And that's the ECU that was in the red project. So, I don't know whether you guys can tell, but you have this little chip down here and that chip there. They are very different. That's a very promising thing to see. That, that means that the potential of this car with the cams, with the supercharger, the exhaust, obviously not the exhaust right now, but the exhaust, um, will be sort of running somewhere near around the 250 to 300 brake horsepower mark, um, give or take. But yeah, that, that's very exciting to see actually. I'm well chuffed with that. But that, that's great news. Now I know that the ECU's definitely been worked on. Um, that is a big bonus. Um, there is the information if anyone wants to um, have a search up and find out what that is exactly um, and if you can find one for yourself. So apart from that difference, there's not really any difference in any of the circuitry on the ECU by um, well, that chip and I know that chip I'm not sure that whether that chip demobilizes automatically or not but I know that you can plug these into VCDS or VAGCOM um, and get this fired up and through the OBD2 port you can actually demobilize one of these um, I will eventually end up getting one of those um, to be able to do stuff like that but right now it's not something that's very important because I don't have an immobilizer on this car so that's great Time to screw these back up. We'll do this one first. And make sure when you put them back that there's like a seal, a lip on the plastic, just there. Make sure that when you screw this back up that that actually clips in um, and then it will stay nice and secure. It's actually like a weather seal, um, stops water, all of that sort of stuff getting inside the ECU. So there's one. So don't over tighten as well obviously, just tighten them up to the point where you know they are nice and snug. Um, you don't want to go stripping out the plastic on the box. That's free. So yeah, I mean, you know, straight away when I pulled the ECU out, I noticed oh, I noticed that there was um the writing on the ECU, which kind of represented something. Um, It'd be interesting to know what that exactly means, like whoever wrote that. Um, I'd actually like to get in touch with some of the um, previous owners. I've actually got a lot of the car's history as well with receipts and stuff like that. Um, and there's a guy, I believe his name was Ryan Knox or something like that. Um, and it has an address which actually is where I used to live um, in London, a place called Belvedere. Um, so I might one day go to that address and give give it a knock and just hope, you know, when I'm working that direction, just hope and pray that that person still lives there. Um, and then I can find out to what extent this car was when they had it, if it was super, like, supercharged already or not. Uh, I think that'd be quite an interesting thing. Uh, definitely a good thing to make a video of. Um, so yeah. Right, that's the two ECUs back together. Let's get it put back in the car. So again, I know I keep repeating myself, but let's just make sure the battery's disconnected when you do this. So it's pretty simple, like I say. You make sure they're lined up and then what you do is you push this along as far as it'll go and it'll pull itself tight into the ECU by these locks. So I'll get that done quick because I'm not going to be able to do that with one hand. So there we go, that's done. Just make sure that you've pushed that in as tight as that can go. And then obviously connect your battery back up. And then before you put it away, obviously it's worth testing just to make sure that everything's running as it should be. Otherwise once you put that back in you've got to take it back out if it's not. So we do have power, which is great. So, that's us all back together. Only thing I've got to do now is put the scuttle tray back in. Um, and then yeah, swap the batteries back out. Um, put that one back in the car for now. Um, 
yeah, and I think that's it for this car for a minute. Like I said, I'm quite happy that we've got the exhaust on. That's good news. So that's the scuttle back in. Um, I've just got to put on the weather strip. Um, make sure, obviously, your hood jet washes and um, the power for the motor is all clipped back in down the side there. It stops the bonnet. Bonnet catches, catching it, and you're pretty much good to go. Put the rubber seal on back along there, and we are happy days. Right, we're all back together. Battery, I'll leave disconnected because I'm not obviously doing anything with the car now. So it was all back in. Oil caps back on, so yeah, we are good to go. So yeah, I'm gonna lock this car up. Right, so that's another episode on Project Red. Thank you all for watching. Like I say, like, comment, subscribe, it really helps me out and it is greatly appreciated. Apologies for the noise when I'm walking around as well. This place is full of stones, it is a little bit irritating. So yeah, as always guys, thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate every view that I get. Um, have a wonderful day and see you guys on the next one. Take care, bye bye.